Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and welcome to 21 things you need to know about Star Wars Squadrons. Number one, Star Wars Squadrons is a space combat game set in the Star Wars universe. That means you'll be flying through space using iconic combat spacecraft from those movies. Number two, Star Wars Squadrons will be fully playable in virtual reality if you want. Those of you who want the extra immersion and to feel like you're actually in those spacecraft can pop on a PS VR headset or a PC VR headset to achieve that effect. But if you want to play on your TV screens only or your PC monitors, you can do that too. Number three, Squadrons is set after Return of the Jedi after the second Death Star has been destroyed and after the Battle of Endor. Number four, Squadrons is being developed by Mosov Studios, owned by EA. Mosov previously helped DICE with development of Star Wars Battlefront 2. However, this will be their first project that they solely developed themselves. Number five, the game will have a single player campaign alongside two multiplayer modes. Number six, the single player campaign will alternate between two different pilots that you can customize yourself. One pilot fights for the Galactic Empire, while the other fights for the New Republic. Number seven, one of the two multiplayer modes is called Dogfights, which is pretty much team deathmatch and pits two teams of five players against each other. The other mode is called Fleet Battles, which is pretty similar to Dogfights, but with the added objective of destroying the enemy's capital ships and flagship to win. Number eight, as of right now, Squadrons will be coming out on all platforms, except for Nintendo Switch, on October 2nd, which really isn't very long away at all. But as always, never rule out the possibility of a delay. Number nine, Squadrons will support crossplay, not just between all platforms, but even between those playing in virtual reality and those not. Now it remains to be seen if those playing in virtual reality will be at an advantage by being able to freely turn their head while targeting and shooting, but the potential is there. Number 10, HOTUS controllers are supported on PC, but as of right now, are not going to be supported on PSVR. Now this may change in the future, but it's worth noting here as there was some confusion around this point at first. Number 11, the game will feature eight playable ships in total, four on the Galactic Empire side and four on the New Republic side. The ships on the Galactic side will not have shields other than the Reaper. To offset this, pilots on those ships will have one less thing to worry about, according to creative director Ian Frazier, which simplifies things and makes them more focused. Number 12, the four ships on each side play as different classes. The Galactic Empire has the TIE Fighter, which is the fighter class, the TIE Interceptor, which is the Interceptor class, the TIE Reaper, which is the Support class, and the TIE Bomber, which is the Bomber class. Number 13, the New Republic has the X-Wing, which acts as the Fighter class, the A-Wing, which acts as the Interceptor class, the Y-Wing, which is the Bomber class, and the U-Wing, which is the Support class. Number 14, the cockpits inside each ship will accurately give the player information such as ship damage, power management, speed, etc. These indicators all update in real time so that the player can turn off their UI entirely if they want and rely on these if that's what they prefer. Number 15, players will need to manage power of their ships between three key areas, engines, weapons and shields. It will be up to players to decide the best way to do so and whichever way suits their playstyle. Pumping all the power into one specific field will give the ship a unique ability that it wouldn't otherwise be able to perform. Players can decide how much control they have over power management, be it simplified or advanced. Number 16. Star Wars is not a full price game. Instead, retailing for 40 euros slash dollars. Pre-ordering the game will get you some skins, but there are currently no deluxe or special editions at a higher price, which may surprise many. Number 17. Speaking of surprising, EA have stated that Squadrons will have no microtransactions. Everything in the game can only be unlocked through player progression and they don't see the game as a live service. Number 18. Customization is quite deep and important in Squadrons, with players being able to decide what weapons and equipment to fit onto their 
ships and doing so while trying to complement whatever weapons and equipment their teammates would be equipping. An example given by the creative director is for one player to equip a tractor beam to hold an enemy in place for a few seconds, while a teammate equips a powerful Goliath missile, which usually would have poor accuracy on a fast moving target. Number 19. There is no third person perspective in squadrons. All gameplay will be played through a cockpit view in first person. Different ships will have different cockpits, meaning some will have wider fields of view than others. The only way to see in third person is when spectating. Number 20. There are currently six known maps to do battle in. These are Yavin Prime, which is a massive gas giant planet, Acellas, an imperial listening post surrounded by an icy ring, the Nadiri Dockyards, which is a starship manufacturing facility under New Republic protection, Sisubo, a planet surrounded by the remains of imperial ships with a dangerous debris field, Galatan, an asteroid field made up of destroyed moon, which still has molten fragments in it. And finally, the Xavian Abyss, which is a hazardous area filled with electrically charged asteroids and shipwrecks. Number 21. All modes can be played solo with bot teammates and against boss enemies, though rewards are not as high for doing so. And there you have it, 21 things you need to know about Star Wars Squadrons. Let me know in the comments how you're feeling about this upcoming title and I hope you learned something from watching this video. Before I go, let me give a big thank you to my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen right now. Thanks to their support, the channel can stay moist. In particular, let me shout out the top tier Patreon supporters, Pete Hawkins, Crumb, Daniel the Pumpkin Patch Kid, Chopped 517 and Tradition. Thank you very much for that incredibly moist generosity. If you would like to help support this channel, you can do so over on patreon.com forward slash petrifying pumpkins, the link to which is in the description below. But if you don't want to, I'll be happy with the likes and the comments and all that usual shite too. Finally, let me thank Decepticon for allowing me to always use his music in these videos. You can find him over at Decepticon.com, the link of which will be in the description below. That is it for this video, I'll see you lads and ladies in the next one, stay moist.